Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy. And to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 54 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 55 in the RSV. Unto the end, in verses understanding for David. Again, this psalm contains the knowledge of David written out in the verses of one of his songs. David seems to have written this, but many other people can say these words with equal validity. Hear, O God, my prayer, and despise not my supplication. Be attentive to me and hear me. I am grieved in my exercise, and am troubled at the voice of the enemy and at the tribulation of the sinner, for they have cast iniquities upon me, and in wrath they were troublesome to me. A plea for the Lord to hear us in our trouble, which is caused by our enemies attacking us and lying about us. My heart is troubled within me, and the fear of death is fallen upon me. Fear and trembling are come upon me, and darkness hath covered me. I'm afraid of dying, because I've been given a reason to be. And I said, Who will give me wings like a dove? And I will fly and be at rest. I've been hoping someone would provide some means of escaping from my enemies. The mention of wings refers to a bird's ability to escape from predators by flying out of reach, an example I've seen used more than once in the Bible. Lo, I have gone far off flying away, and I abode in the wilderness. I hid in the wilderness away from the cities to get away from the people who hate me. I waited for him that hath saved me from pusillanimity of spirit and a storm. Pusillanimity means cowardice. God saves us from being cowards, and we wait for him to arrive and offer us his help. Cast down, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen iniquity and contradiction in the city. Day and night shall iniquity surround it upon its walls, and in the midst thereof are labor, and injustice, and usury, and deceit have not departed from its streets. There's all sorts of deception, evil, injustice, and struggles in the city, so we ask God to stop the words of evildoers from causing harm to us, turning them against each other instead. For if my enemy had reviled me, I would verily have borne with it. And if he that hated me had spoken great things against me, I would perhaps have hidden myself from him. I can take insults and feel shame when people have real grievances against me. But thou, a man of one mind, my guide and my familiar, who didst take sweetmeats together with me, in the house of God we walked with consent. However, this mistreatment isn't coming from one of my enemies, but from someone who I considered a close friend, who I always thought was faithful. Let death come upon them, and let them go down alive into hell, for there is wickedness in their dwellings in the midst of them. This is not a request to let them be dragged into hell, it's a prediction. David is writing that these people, because of their choices, will face death and terror. Also, it's worth noting that the term translated alive into hell here refers to a living inferno, which implies a deeply unpleasant fate, not just a regular death. But I have cried to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning, and at noon I will speak and declare, and he shall hear my voice. He shall redeem my soul in peace from them that draw near to me. For among many they were with me. God shall hear, and the Eternal shall humble them, for there is no change with them and they have not feared God. Because I call out to God, he'll listen to me and give me peace, despite my enemies. He'll also teach them humility because of their unwillingness to respect him. He hath stretched forth his hand to repay. They have defiled his covenant. They are divided by the wrath of his countenance, and his heart hath drawn near. His words are smoother than oil, and the same are darts. He, in this verse, refers to the friend who betrays, not to God. The traitor betrays the covenant he made with God and causes division and harm with his words, precisely because he's smooth-tongued. We know this because smooth words being used as weapons is the way of evil, not God. Cast thy care upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall not suffer the just to waver forever. God will ultimately do good for us if we trust him and put our faith in him. But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee, O Lord. 
Bloodthirsty liars will die an early death because God will let them be destroyed. We should trust God to bring this about. So, this psalm deals directly with the issue of betrayal by those you trust, and the importance of relying on God for protection and reassurance when that happens. It also praises God for the good that he does, and promises others that God can always be relied on, no matter how long it takes for him to deliver justice. We simply have to be patient and continue in prayer, worship, and faithfulness. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.